Hi there. I'm Sana Vishya and you're watching me on YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn Live. And today we are going to talk about how to deal with how to deal with being ignored by someone you love in and out of relationship. And today we are going to have a roundtable discussion and how to deal with being ignored by someone you love. When you like someone and you are getting to know the person and in a dating uh, and then and the other person is giving you a cold shoulder then it's not a difficult situation it is a difficult situation to go through to go through the whole situation of being avoided and being neglected but it, 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 since you are in uh, in a not in a relationship you are just dating it's just things are not going well and you can't blame the person because you're not and you whether you can or not but since it's that dating dating is a bit more complicated uh, than relationship in in dating you just call reach out to the person uh, and call him or text him you can call, uh, you can tell them that uh, that about your feeling that you're feeling something is missing or something off and and respect the other person's honesty and it, be quiet be respectable and if the other person if uh, wants a space then you should give them their privacy and their space and that's how you deal with someone uh, deal with being avoided being ignored in a relationship or someone you love in a in a dating or on the other hand when you how to deal with being ignored by someone you love in a relationship then you can follow this strategy of of calling them reaching out to them and asking that there's something wrong uh, it can work uh, if it is the first time and but you have to keep in mind you have to check whether there is a pattern there you have to check whether the person is manipulating you or or something else and we are going to dive into it much deeper and it, it is a very important topic and it's also very interesting and to discuss this topic my guests are melissa amy she has joined us from new york and paul from iceland how are you guys? Good. How are you? Well, I'm doing hey, pal. good. Hi. Yeah. Hey, nice Amanda. Yeah. Thank Hi, you Amanda. for joining us. Yeah. And thank you guys. And if you're just joining us live, then please share it out. And the topic is it, it, it's a bit, uh, I would say, a psychoanalytical topic. Mm. Uh, can I call it psychoanalytical topic? Because mm, it happens. Uh, but People don't go. Uh, people don't dive into this such situation. How to deal with someone? How to deal with uh, being ignored by someone you love? Especially, uh, I'm going to start with with dating. You are you are getting to know the person, and the other person is giving you a cold shoulder, and you have to check whether the person is upset, whether the person whether the person is busy or distracted. Or you did something, you said something. There, there are a number of things going on, and you have to make sure. And uh, what is going on? Uh, especially, I'm gonna in terms of in in terms of dating, Melissa. So someone is ignore. So I'm dating someone, and they're not they're yeah. not calling me back, or or they're. Yes, they're yes. not calling me back. They're not paying. In. So yes, I would ask them. You know, is something wrong? Um, but also, I don't like when people aren't upfront. So if something is bother bothering them, I'm not big on the passive aggressive behavior. So that would be a red flag to me from the beginning. But I, I mean, everybody takes it. That's just my way I would deal with it. I, I don't really care for that. I'm a very direct person, and when I meet someone to begin with, I would tell them. You know, I'm a direct person. So I, I wouldn't care for that. So they would actually lose points with me, to be honest. And Paul? 
if you're getting to know the person and the other person mm. is giving you a cold shoulder is early dating and the most i think uh, as I, as melissa said melissa has a different strategy she just step back and what would be your point of view reach out to the person I, I would, or just simply step by i would step back i mean yeah uh-huh. is i mean trusting my senses i would i mean yes i i, I usually go um ahead of myself in excusing mm-hmm. the other whatever you know the other party and uh I would probably tell to myself, I mean, I would have a conversation with myself and and sort of explain it away. That it's probably a busy time, you know. Can I, can I add something to that? Yeah. I just wanted to add something. The, the person I was before I've done deep work would have made excuses for that person. Or, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've done that a lot. So this is a person who who's that boundary so to me that would be a red flag if somebody was playing games and i have to i have to follow them around to find try and figure out what's wrong with them when they can't be an adult and have a conversation with me you know so um yes i mean people don't think of the little things and they and we make excuses for other people it just snowballs and i'm part of like breaking old habits and part of that one of those old habits is i'm not playing games anymore life's too short you know, we're people were committed to, to truth. And so that that's childish to me. Mm. But I think I, we just I, have I, to I, be conscious of it, you know? Yeah. And, yes. and the other thing I would like to add here that there, there could be a number of things. If the person is manipulative and is giving you a cold shoulder and he knows that, he or she knows that, that you like him, like him or her, then... Uh, and he is in a, in a manipulative mode, giving you a culture. So in order to make you to do something, it, it's a possibility. Then in, in such case, you should step back. And mm-hmm. there's another possibility mm-hmm. that uh, that you did something, you said something, and you know that. Then in, in that case, you should reach out to the person. Right. And ask well, them. Yeah. Follow them. Yeah. And, uh, and call, it's, call. It's, it's just something that I've learned. Something I've learned through my 64 years in communicating with other men. And I've, I've had enough uh, women friends that we've sort of compared notes. And now I'm talking to men now, I, I mean, about men. And uh, if a man is interested, he will find you. Mm-hmm. There is not an excuse. If he, even if he loses your phone number, he t- doesn't remember where you live or whatever. He, if he's interested, he will find you. And nobody on this God-given earth is is exactly sure how they do it, but they do find you. Right. So rest assured, if you're dating a guy and he's really interested, by stepping back. You're also what taking about- a time out for yourself because you have mm-hmm. to reevaluate what am I bringing to this scene? I mean, what am I? And, and to be honest, I think, I mean, I don't know how I was, I can't remember how I was 25 years ago or anything, but mm-hmm. you do have to do some self. I mean, it's, it's really a good thing for yourself to have some me time and regroup you know so regroup it doesn't thoughts. have to be a it doesn't have to be a bad thing when you're dating mm-hmm. a guy yeah. I, I think uh, there's a okay please just uh, I'm gonna stop uh, start with, what about in a relationship and the whole the whole scenario is changed now you are in a relationship and you both person and both partners know each other uh, very intimately and very closely. Then, in such case, uh, if you do something, then you have to apologize and reach out to the person. But there could be a number of things. Melissa? Oh, so, you know, okay. Melissa? So, if I know that I've done something wrong, mm-hmm. um, yes. Yes. You know, but I think, is. but I think the communication 
if you're really going into it in a conscious way, you're, you're not letting it get to the point where it kind of explodes, where you're having it, like the cold shoulder back and forth anyway, because you're not communicating. That's a symptom of, of something else. So we can't just have quick fixes for everything. It has to go, when I, every session, I, every, not every session, I'm calling it a session. Every uh, live, I mentioned that we have to work on the roots. So the roots, I want to go to the origins or the roots of the problems in the relationship. If you're getting to a point where you have to apologize and there's some stuff going on back and forth and you're not, you're not um, in a good, I don't know if you say vibration, you're not in a good connection with one another. So that's a problem. So both of you really need to own that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is very interesting. <coughs> it's a very interesting thing. If things are happening, uh, you are giving uh, your partner a your cold shoulder and the other person is also not talking to you, then uh, the problem is at the center, at the origin, that there is something deeply wrong in the relationship or with you, you are with the wrong person. And Paul? Mm. I, I think it's, like I pointed out before on Melissa's um, discussion, I think it's um, a, a matter of perception. And, and I say this because, yes, like you pointed out earlier, Usually we know in a relationship, we know things haven't been perfect lately. So the way you perceive the other party is probably based on your assumptions about several things that may have been building up to this. And yes, you you could be one of the reasons why he is... um, distance distant um, it is it's both people it's not it's, just one it's, it's usually and this it, you can't go around you, you always no matter if you're in a relationship or dating or whatever you also you always look at yourself you have to check you have to do some self-checking what have i have i been doing something wrong uh, and obviously you will have to ask the first thing you and if the person said no nothing about that you have said or done then you go into the self search you you do i mean and it's not a formula i think most people want to know the cause for it and that they start search they, they start in their own backyard thankfully and there's check-ins you know that i think mm-hmm. um we say lessons but in relationships it could be fights you know um imbalance imbalance Mm-hmm. And imbalance mm-hmm. leads to fighting and, and passive aggressive behavior and all the other stuff that goes with it. Um, but it's a check in to see, you know, how, how are you, how are you within yourself? Mm-hmm. And then how are you doing in the relationship? It, mm-hmm. Is it, is it working for you? What's not working? And if you don't know that, then um, you're just, you're, it's going to be more problems in the relationship and, and with, within yourself. You have to check in. Are you happy? Yeah. You know what? What? What are you doing, mate? Like, what would you like to be doing? You know, when you think of not fairy tale images in your head, but you, if you think of how do you want to spend your time and, and what do you want to do with with the person you're with? You know, how many? How fulfilled do you? How how fulfilled are you? Yeah. The same thing as your career. You do it in your relationship, and you do it within yourself. I have a question. Uh, okay, we have we are not talking about. We are talking about the relationship, and I have a question about about dating. And when you are mm-hmm. dating someone, and you are getting to know the person, and the other person is giving you a cold shoulder, the question is, how do you know whether the person is manipulative or uh, has taken something, or is he, he is just he or she is just distracted? How do you know the person? Uh, or you did something wrong, and you don't know that. And you said something, perhaps they have taken it personally. And there are a number of things going on. How do you know about the other person, Melissa? I would still answer it the same way I answered it the last time. You, you, you asked it kind of the same way. So mm-hmm. I would do the same thing. That, to me, would be a red flag. You know, I'm not so much worried about they're an adult. So even if there, a crisis happened, if you want to have a relationship with me, then you give me a call and you let me know, hey, this is going on. I'm not going to be able to get in touch with you for a little while. But if you don't value me or I'm not valued on that list to even contact about what's going on with you, then um, that's a red flag. So it, w- it wouldn't be about me trying to figure out what's going wrong with them. 
Mm. You know, would I be curious? Yes. But like, even if they try to reach out to me after things settled to me, they're a little bit lower now. Now my trust is a little bit off, you know, it's a little mm. like, well, I, you know, I'm not saying I wouldn't necessarily talk to them again or give them some kind of shot, but, um, <clears throat> It would, they would definitely lose some points, put it that way. Paul? Is that too harsh? Does, do people think that's too harsh? I don't know. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing is that like, but if you're dating and there, there's been um, a pushback uh, for some time, let's say two weeks or three weeks, to me that's a natural thing. If you got together again and started dating, it's obvious that the guy that you know moved away or, or i don't know had had to um you know give you a cold shoulder it's obvious he's going to explain why that happened what was going on i mean to me it goes without saying and, and you actually you can lead you can lead the discussion into that you know you I mean, two adults talking. Obviously, you're going to uh, you're going to uh, bring it out on the table. Yeah, I mean, at least that's in my culture. And then, incidentally, uh, the last two weeks have been hectic for me. I've been doing this and that, so there is an explanation in the air. And you would obviously say, "Well, thank you for clearing that up." Then. That, that is the, the communication of two adults. I, I, I kind of feel like even our everything, everything in our society is dumbed down. And I think even our relationships are so dumbed down that, mm. that this is like a kindergarten. Like even when I think about it, like relationship wise, this is like a kindergarten level of what we should about basic social skills. Yes. You know, like yeah. dude, that's pretty freaky when you think about it, you know, yeah. but, yes. but we have to we have to explore this in, in every area. So relationships mm. part of it. And we're so used to these low expectations mm -hmm. of others and of, of ourselves that we even consider this. Like to me, it's like if someone blows me off, they sh people show you how important you are in their life. They show you, mm -hmm. you know, when they mm -hmm. show you, why make excuses for that? You know, it doesn't matter why you're showing me. So mm -hmm. I, I will retract. You know, I'm not going to worry about why you're not in touch with me because that's mm -hmm. wasting my time. I'm not, unless you communicate to me, I don't know. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. I have other things, you know, because I enjoy my own company and I have things that interest me. I'm not going to spend my time worried about why someone isn't getting in touch with me. And that's in every relationship. It's not just um, romantic ones, you know? Yeah. Yes. It is important. Communication is the key. And you have to show your feeling to the person you are going out to it or you're a person in a relationship, there should be a consistency in your, I think consistency is also important, consistency in your behavior and consistency in your attitude, consistency in your, right. in your communication and consistency in your, the feelings you are showing. And, and, and now getting back to the relationship and we talking about that, uh, the person, uh, you have to go back to the rules to check out but what is there in the relationship? What if it, if it is happening consistently, and then you have to check uh, there's something wrong in the but in the relationship. But people keep doing that. Uh, we have got many examples. I was I was reading about yesterday that people are married. Uh, one person is cheated on the other partner, and they just live on with it. Even uh, even they don't have kids, but they keep on living in such a relationship. Melissa? I think it's, again, it, it would be um, being comfortable in your life. Even, like, I'd rather be with this because what else is out there? Or making excuses why you really can't change. And it, it can be even more complicated than that, that both of them are getting some kind of need even if it's a dysfunctional need met from each other, because that's the only reason why you would continue to stay in something that's harmful. And when I mean harmful, I mean it both ways. There's a person who's um, committing adultery has um, unhappiness in that relationship and, and definitely unhappiness in themselves. Cause some, some people are just serial adulterers. It doesn't matter. 
but there's other ones who could do it out of loneliness, um, being in a, 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 a lifeless marriage, a loveless marriage, um, <clears throat> staying for the kids or staying because they have uh, belongings together and they don't want to, you know, it'll be too hard to d divide it up or what will other people think? What will the family think? We share all these friends in common. Um, so it's, it's a dysfunction well, on both places. Yeah. Well, they're committing adultery because they want, they want to get out of the relationship and they don't know how to do it. And it, adultery may seem an easier for them, easier option for them. Because well, that's, a ca happens. that's a coward. That's a coward way to do it. Yeah. But people There's do a that. lesson with that. There's a lesson if you do that. Because if what you're meeting someone, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I got like, uh, if you oh, no, meet no, somebody, no, no. if you meet somebody by commit by them committing adultery to be with you, what kind of trust? Do you have any common sense at all? Like, what kind of trust would that be? You met them and they were in a relationship and mm -hmm. they decided to, ha you know, be with you. So what loyalty does that show you? It's like another, it's like um, we were speaking about Brene Brown the first time we talked, I believe, or the second time. And it was about if someone gossips around you, like there's friendships that the only thing they have in common is they hate the same people or, you know, it, it's that negative kind of thing. So it's the same thing with adultery because it's, it's an ethical, it's an ethical character. Um, it's lying and it's a betrayal. So um, if someone's capable of doing that, not that like if you've done it before in your life, but um, you decide, you know, you make a real change and understand that it's wrong. Um, if you don't do that, you're, you're going to repeat that pattern. And, and when things get tough in the next relationship, they're going to do the same thing to you and the yeah. other person too, because they're both really, you know, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to be with someone who's in a relationship with somebody else. There's too, I, I don't believe that we live in a place of scarcity. There's plenty of fish out there, you know, and I know my work. So I think people who think, well, this is the only person and, and this is my hidden love, but even though they're married or you're married and you're breaking all these contracts and you're not being ethical, but, um, and you think this is going to work out, not on a karmic level that's mm -hmm. going to work out. Um, because what you do to others comes back, it comes back to you. To you. Mm -hmm. and it's an excellent sorry, point, Paul. Uh, excellent point, Melissa has just made, Paul, that uh, when you are uh, going out or the person is committing adultery and is sleeping with you and he might do the same thing with you tomorrow. It's an excellent message there. Yeah, well, if, if, you, if you're in a relationship, I would hardly call it a relationship. If, if you're okay. sleeping with somebody that's married or whatever, you know you're the uh, third wheel and you're dispensable anyway. So it's, it's basically a fling. And yes, you have qualms. <laughs> you have qualms about it, and you know it's not going anywhere. But you have no expectations, and you may have started off as friends or whatever. It, it turned into this, but it's it's um, I don't know. It, it's it's nothing to. Um, I mean, if if you have expectations toward that guy, then you're a complete fool. I'm sorry to say. It's just a t yeah. it's 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 just to kill time for for I mean it's it's nothing really it's uh, I mean it's, I think it's, it's so just, if you if you decide you have feelings and and you said okay we'll end the relationship or you know end the relationship first um, mm -hmm. you know don't yeah. secrets keep you sick and uh, especially be, if you're someone who, who 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 wants to live in truth and make real changes in your life but you know committing those kind of lie it's a lie you know it's a lie. And if someone would get into a relationship with you and not think of that, you know, you're going to get what you deserve because you're contributing mm -hmm. to it too. Because how would they like if that was done to them? You do, you know, you do unto others as what you would have done unto you. So if you would have a relationship with someone who's in another relationship and sneak behind that person's back, then you have no ethics, you know? Mm. Yeah. And especially when I, you're talking, I mean, this, is a, this is a very intimate exchange. I mean, people don't even treat sex, um, they, sacred anymore at all you know and, and that's just mm -hmm. ongoing you know that's just across the board and um if you could just you know that's a sacred you know sacred ritual and you would just have it with somebody around the corner and behind your wife's back or behind your husband's back i'm like what ethics is that you know mm -hmm. what ethics I really when you think about it 
it has just become a physical thing. Yeah. Yes. And, and the uh, sacredness and sanctity of it is just lost. It's just in the, it just lost in the books and voice. And the best strategy is, is to be honest, to be honest and open and communicate. Let your partner, let your uh, spouse know that this is happening, that you are, your feelings, your emotions are being shifted towards the other person. But communication is difficult, Melissa. Talking yes, about it is. accepting accepting your feelings and sharing your true feelings to, to your partner and to the person you know, it is difficult. Melissa, it is. It's 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 very it's very hard because, and I think I've been really truthful, I guess, in all my relationships, and um, it's not as easy as one would think because a lot of people keep things hidden and they don't tell the other person um, the truth. But I feel like if, if I'm if I'm spend most of my time researching truth, then I li- you know also live truth in my life. Then I'm not going to hide certain parts. I'm going to just be upfront with all, with all of it. And also the fact that I I want to vocalize what <laughs> I want my life to be like, what's important to me. Because I, if I don't put it out there, it will never happen. So um, it is really hard when you have really like I don't really keep any secrets. So um, you know most people think I'm nuts. But I kind of feel like most people are not being truthful with themselves. So to them, this looks weird. You know, honesty seems weird. Vulnerability seems weird to people, you know, because you're not used to seeing it. A lot of what we see is plastic around us, you know, inauthentic, masks. So it's, uh, and it's not so easy to be the one to do it. But it feels so freeing, you know, but it's not easy. It's not easy at all to do. It's a comment here, and then I'll ask the question to Paul. A comment is you are the most, uh, and I I think I, last week I had to pause that Melissa is the most honest person I have ever known. Uh, yeah, and she just authentic and honest. She she would say anything to you on your face. That's right. It. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, Paul. Communication is difficult in the relationship, especially when you know the person and you have been together for a very long time, and in such case sharing your feeling some people do that but for the for majority of people it is difficult well it i wouldn't say difficult it takes a lot of energy out of you and and energy absolutely you're totally exhausted and and when you get these time offs and i'm talking from my own experience when my guy left for his home country it was a holiday for me and I, I, I literally had to recuperate and gain some energy back. I was exhausted. And, and part of it, because the good thing about that was that I got a lot of me time. I didn't socialize. I was too exhausted to socialize anyway. So, I mean, it, it wasn't a question of, it was not a question of uh, Finding another one like that, that was never the issue. The issue was just to, to have a quiet time and a lot of me time. And this is when I start started doing uh, my power walk because it was 90 minutes of me time when nobody could interrupt me. And I, I fell in love with that time and, and this frame. And I, I felt protected during those 90 minutes. I wasn't really happy to let it go. And I took those 90 minutes even after he returned because I needed it. I felt it. And then it gradually became from one and a half hour to two and a half hours. And I have actually, I, I have actually proof that it worked because um, I had my, uh, I, I went for a massage about, I think it was Thursday night rather than Friday night. And I went into this room because it's always the same thing. You take a hot, warm bath, you drink a glass of water, then you go on the bench and you pull this thin thing over yourself. So, And you're lying there when the master enters the room. And he asked me, actually, after the session, he said, have you changed in any way over the last four, four weeks? Because, uh, no, no, not really. No, but I'm just happy now. I'm, I'm, I'm not stressed out. I'm just happy and I, f- I feel some sort of balance. 
And then he said, well, both a month ago and now, I sensed there is a very, is a very strong sort of like heat coming from you when I give you the massage. So, and when I think back, it was about when I lengthened my me time, my walks. So something has changed inside of me. Wait, did he, can you repeat that? Did he say the heat that you, you're giving off less heat or more heat? More heat. I, I oh, to more alchemy. More alchemy. Heat, heat. I heated the room. He said, alchemy. Now, when I, I walked into the, I, it felt like a sauna. Mm. He said that. And I said, what? It must have been the candles. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the candles. And he looked at me in a funny way. And I, mm. I didn't have any answer to that. I didn't understand him. And then he left, you know, I, I left. And, uh, and then, I think it was last night, it sort of came to me, wait a minute. Ah, and then I was able to put it together. So, yeah, it's, it's, about, it's about balance. It's about balance yeah. also. Things happen in life well, that, that you get the answer, you understand, comprehend the situation much later. And you know yes. something is happening right now, but you don't know, you don't understand something. Just like I was, I had always a vision and I was always a mystical experience when I go out for an evening walk and look at the sun setting. And yes. it just, it just uh, yeah. triggers me and just triggers me that there's something about this. Uh, mm. why, am, why am I attracted to this, this particular moment in time? And Ed explained it to me that it is the divine time, a reflection of divinity, and it's yes. a glimpse of divinity, and you just connect within those moments. And yeah, at that time I realized that why, why am I attracted to those moments is because of the divine glimpses. They give me a sign to connect with divinity. And those moments, only it happens for a few moments, and that's it, it's yes. gone. Yeah. Yes. And it, I've always done it. I was always experienced those things, but I never knew what is happening there. And Paul, mm. your example is the same, that something was happening, your body was emitting a huge amount of energy. And you, you didn't know yeah. what was happening. And later on, when you did the inner work, and then you see, okay, uh, that was the case. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. About, yeah, please continue. Uh, no, it's just uh, last Thursday. It was Thursday night. And mm -hmm. uh, it'd been a weird day. It had been a weird day. And mm -hmm. I did a lot of walking, but I was so balanced. And I was so, and I may have mentioned it somewhere, I think. I, I dropped it somewhere, you know, first this and that, and then massage in the work. And it was as normal as it can be. It was almost like, you know, drinking your tea or whatever. And and when I look back, that day was, it was working up to this. And then when I got the massage in the evening, I was sort of fulfilled. I had done the right things over the day. So it may have been reflecting that as well. And, and, and when you talk about communication, uh, for instance, your, your, your connection with your parents. And for, for some people, it is easier to say that, tell them, okay, I love you, dad, I love you, mom. But for, for, for majority of people, okay, especially I'm talking about from my, from my culture, you don't have a culture of saying, I love you, dad. But when it comes to, you know your father, and your father knows you, and you are in a very deep connection, the connection you have with your parents is, is, is a kind of connection that you don't have you don't get to have with anyone else around the world. But uh, when you have you, uh, the connection you have with your parents and in such a relationship, in such a connection, to, to share your exact feelings, to telling them, uh, it, it is easy to say that I love you, Dad. But uh, when you are uh, in such a going through it, you are distant with yourself and you are not, not, I won't say that distant, to some extent you are distant with yourself, you are not, you don't, you have, you haven't done the inner work 
and you are in a relationship with your parents and uh, where you don't share your feelings and you know each other very well very well in such a case then sharing your feelings is also requires a lot of energy melissa it, it does require a lot of energy to share to be vulnerable um to share your expectations to um to I guess, you know, I, I keep using the word boundary, but to, to set limits for what you will tolerate around you, it is hard. It's very, very hard. And I think a lot of people are going through that now um, with their relationships with their family. And it, it is really hard. But um, you have to set those limits yourself. And I have, I set my own limits, put it that way, when it comes to family. So I'm a little hard with that, you know, because a lot of people are maybe going through stuff that I already went through. When it came to setting boundaries with their family, I already did. Um, but I, I think Pal would might be a better because Pal, you had a very close relationship with your parents, right? Or yes, I don't know. Yes. We, I, okay, maybe you. I think for you, I think yeah. because I, I'm detached. So I, oh. I think you. This would be a good question for you. Yeah, well, I was 21 when my, when my father died from cancer, and uh, it was, I don't know. Um, the way I experienced it at the time, I didn't really understand what it meant for me until later on. I mean, to me, it was just losing a war, you know, with cancer. So I, I took it. I took the uh, soldier on it, if you like. And, you know, what a bleeding shame we lost this war, you know. But it wasn't until I was 27, 28 that I really missed him because then I needed him. Because then I would have, oh, I would have loved to ask my father about this. But he wasn't there, and so Paul, I really missed one him. Paul, one cool question: Do you have a culture of uh, sharing, saying "I love you, Dad"? Culture no. in Europe no. and Iceland, in Scandinavia? No, no, we never talk no. about the love. Well, no, we don't talk about. We don't also in the Asian, in the Pakistan, in no. the right. subcontinent. Ours wasn't either. either. We don't have the culture. Also, of, in Iceland, uh, Icelandic in la Icelandic language has more. Love is more than love. I mean, love, the single word love doesn't really cover it in Icelandic. We have more words for it. There are many different sorts of love, and we differentiate everything. So, uh, wow. So wow, it's uh, that's great. So it's, that, yeah, uh, me it's too. a respectful love towards your parents. You're able to express that. And uh, it's almost romantic a formal way. Romantic love is is Different. more being a bit nutty you know you make a fool out of yourself for love you know uh -huh. kind of love but when it comes to your father and mother it's all about respect and uh, you show it you show it more than you say it and uh well, and like you, that and it's it's like my mother she said she said many things she dropped sentences she had parkinson's so she had a problem expressing herself but she made it very short and to the point. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I, she, yeah, I love that too because she was very clever. And she formed a short sentence to be able to say it. Right. And and people and call got, that abrupt, but it's yes, not. But it's not it's to the point. It, it's to the it, point. It, it, to the point and to the heart. So it was right. about how she appreciated how I treated her. Mm -hmm. So she she uh, expressed her gratitude for how I treated her with respect all the time. That's what he said, she said. And that meant the world for, for me because I was creating memories, you see. I knew that I was, I mean, she died um, 16 years ago. So I knew that I would be left behind when she died. So all I had was memories. And this was very important to keep in your heart as memories that she appreciated that I always treated her with respect. I didn't start talking to her until I sat down and made eye contact. Uh -huh. I never spoke above her head. That's disre disrespectful oh. here. Pal, wait, please have please, a seat. I want to do an episode on that just for our future because he just made, um, I think a lot of us just need to go back to basics when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can do an episode. No, I'm not, not today. You know, I'm not saying today, but that, that is just, 
I just think that's amazing what you just said. Yeah. Can you can you continue with that? That's amazing. I well, think we need to hear that again. She, I mean, because she was in a wheelchair, and I, I worked in an institution where I actually taught. I was taught that you should have a seat by, the, you know, your. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't like calling them patients. Yeah, I know. So you know, and, and you have a seat. You make an eye contact before you start talking. And you open the discussion in a sort of informal way, and then you move on. So it's it's a technique. I know that, but it, it's practical. I used that also for my nephews when I was babysitting. I tried to get to the, their eye level before I started speaking mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. contact. Yeah, and they had to look me in the eyes. Yes, we had to make mm -hmm. eye contact. I do that too, and in, in you know, as a therapist, I did do that when I work with. But I forget it, and and I remember a lot when I was you know the therapist, but not mm -hmm. you know when then when I'm outside the session, then mm -hmm. I'm back to the, what I was doing before. But I forgot that. But I did do that when I would meet with a child because I was trying to build rapport. So yes. I always made sure to like even with a dog, like if I greet a dog, I mm -hmm. always make sure to make eye contact, or I yes. put my hand out like that. It's a level of here's my energy or eye contact hmm. but yeah I, I, I think I, that's, I, that's such a great point that's I a even, great I, point I, I, and because you mentioned dog and I'm a cat person so I, I, yes. I took and I, I somebody told me that don't smile at the dog because then you're showing your teeth mm -hmm. so the, the dog yeah. looks at the smile like you're trying to antagonize them or something so they I, might I, decide Okay. I communicate with yeah, dogs in, a lot of times in my will because I'll I'll be loving towards them. Like when I'm near a dog, right. I think that right. way. I'll I'll because mm -hmm. they they're sensing energy, so mm -hmm. I'll I'll have a strong energy. Like you know, like Caesar, you know, like um, it's 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 how you present animal in the animal kingdom. So I have a will or an energy I present at them, but then also love. Like I'm not mm -hmm. I, I give them also the same energy. I'm not here to harm you, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. And I watch, mm -hmm. you know, I'm watching to see how they're reacting. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. we were off topic. Yes, we are off topic. And I just wanted to get back on the topic. Uh, we were talking about the relationships and mm -hmm. uh, about parents, uh, the connection we have in different cultures. And we will get into that next week or any other time. And mm -hmm. uh, now relationship and you are being uh, ignored, how to deal with being ignored by someone you love in a relationship mm -hmm. and you know you have to get uh, get into the roots of the problem what is the problem in the roots and you find out the person is manipulative and he is using you and he he is using you in a way that he gives you a shoulder then you get back to him then he makes you to do some things in order to get back together so that uh, this is a cycle that goes on. What, uh, how do you deal with such situation when, the, uh, when the, your partner turns out to be manip manipulative? Melissa? Oh, all right, manipulative. Well, you nip that in the bud. You nip that right in the bud. Manipulate it. You know, you uh, said it, you know, again, the I have to, we have to, next session, next, next session, next time we talk, I'm going to come up with another, a bunch of different words for boundaries. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you call that out right away. You're upfront about that. And that's not something that you'll tolerate. If you want to tolerate it again, I don't even know if you'd want to tolerate it again. It would be a question to me. Manipulative behavior is, is um, not anything I want to be around. Manipulative behavior like even that we're even saying, well, how are you going to deal? I'm not dealing with manipulative behavior. You know, that's how I feel about it. Paul? Yes, I think, I think in a way, again, it takes two to tango. If, if this, if the guy is manipulative, you have given him um, a certain, you have given, you have, cut him some slack he's obviously got um permission from you to yes try exactly. to manipulate there, there is something in the energy you may not say anything but mm. i I've, I've said this before i'm aware mm. that i'm a little bit too permissive when it comes to relationship i tolerate mm. things 
because I'm usually I'm not I'm not usually older. That's not right. Sometimes mm. they have been a bit older than I am, but I, for some reason, I maybe it's because that many of them were fighting with alcoholism. I don't know, but I you you're you're the healer. You seem like the healer, and yeah, even but yeah. But even your relationship with your sister, you were the caretaker. Yeah. So oh it, it, yeah. so you're so you play that role a lot in relationships, yeah. but um, part of that part of that you're kind of stuck now because you're not really happy mm. in that relationship anymore. So you have to find a new identity in that. And it's, yes. I know, I understand <laughs> that. And it's scary yeah. to do that. Cause what are you if you're not, not that? It, yeah, I know, but I'm still struggling. I struggle with that too. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Like what do I bring to the table? What do I, well, because this is what we thought we brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And now that we don't want to bring that to the table anymore, we see that it's not working completely well for us. Then mm -hmm. what, what do we fill that with? You know, mm -hmm. so now we have to develop ourselves and being ourselves is enough, not what mm -hmm. we have to constantly give to you, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's an exchange, you know, do you care for me or I care? Like, what are we? It, it, it's another balance more than us doing things for somebody doing, doing, fixing, helping, you know, that's, and that's I, exhausting. That's exhausting. You, you just opened yeah. my mind towards it, Melissa, because it yeah. is about balance. It is yeah. about balance. And it's very difficult when you're always the, the grown up in the relationship. And it doesn't really matter if he's older and younger or anything like yes, that. For right. some reason, you are the adult in the relationship. It's very strange. Yeah. I mean, he's too drunk to talk, so you talk. It's, it's typical with my exes. Whenever we traveled abroad, uh, you talk, pal. You fix this, pal. Yeah. 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 Because I knew more languages, and then automatically I became whatever you know the, the tourist guide. The, you know, the fi I fixed everything. You know. Yeah, well, I'm not that person, pal. Yeah. I'm not that person at all. I, I always have someone who fixes it. <laughs> I'm the other person. I'm the other person in that relationship. All right. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but I'm talking. I'm I talking. I mean, be just being a grown up, really. I mean, I, one of my exes, he, he had a son. We we took him to London. And he was like six or seven years older than I was, and he got drunk. And it's a problem when you, you, you're traveling with your son. Even I know that. I don't have a kid. You're not supposed to get drunk when you're traveling with a boyfriend and your son. Yeah. And he left me with the responsibility. I was trying to, talk. <laughs> I, I mean, the boy was going to phone his mother and, and, and you know, talk to his mother and say, well, my father is drunk. <laughs> And, um, you know, I, I sort of talked him out of it. I said, this is your father. You're traveling with him. And why don't you just sleep on it and then phone your mother tomorrow and see how things are with, between you and your father. So I was, a, I was a negotiator as well. Awful. No, I wouldn't know. I, yeah. I would like to say here that sometimes it takes, uh, you have to see the pattern in order to yes. in order to see the see the pattern. Uh, sometimes it takes the whole life you you have been living with someone for twenty years, and now you realize that that person is has been manipulating you, has been doing this over and over again, and he gives you a cold shoulder, and you go there and reach out to the person and reach out to your partner, and then he makes you to do something in order to get back, and he mm -hmm. does it. Uh, two or three years later, does it over and over again, and when you finally sit back together, then you uh, things when things go back normal uh, for next two or three years, you forget everything. Then three or four years later, he does it again, and uh, I think the only thing, the only way you can realize you can see this pattern is when you give yourself a time and sit back, give yourself a me time, do some inner work. And spirituality, the role of spirituality is here. I just want to mention it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go in the details of spirituality. Yeah, you just when you do the inner work, then you see the pattern. Next question is: uh, the, uh, People uh, in uh, okay, it's relevant to appreciating. Uh, my apologies that I'm asking it over and over again. Uh, question is that uh, there's a per common perception, social perception among many young people and many also uh, older people as well, that uh, perception is that if a person is ignoring you, it means he likes you. 
Melissa? That could that could possibly be true. Um, it could be that this person is intimidated, so um, they're scared to connect with you or like anything or I don't know what you call it, like in what way, like um, give you any attention because they're scared that um, that you'll know or something. I, you know, they that that does happen. But I, you know, have you? Why do you uh, have you ever felt that someone? Uh, like you and ignored you? Curious. Yeah. Throwing the pack, you, I'm throwing the question back at you. Yeah. Do you think anybody me? ignored you? Yeah. Do you think anybody has ever ignored you because they liked you? I think it has happened two or three times. And when I give them the, the same cold shoulder back, then they get back to me. Uh, she gets back to me and she says, okay. And we start talking. I think. Uh, okay, in the early age, when you are a teenager or when you are in the early 20s, I think when you are new into the dating world and you don't want to, you have a lot of ego, you know you are cool and she knows she is also cool. She just want to admit her feelings in the beginning. And you don't also, you also don't want to admit your feelings in the beginning. You just, you just, both of you just want to play, play cool. Uh, and I, I think it happens only when you are when you are full of yourself, I would say. Uh, yeah. And the question, uh, the answer is, yeah, it has happened to me. And it was right. And then I gave her the cold shoulder. And then we started talking. And it was good. And I don't know what happened. And then we broke up. Mm. And, All right. Yeah. Um, also, well, with, with uh, alphas, too. Alphas, you know, it's, it, they could be intimidated. So mm -hmm. sometimes people, they're not going to say that to you, but they might feel intimidated. So that that is that does happen. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, pal. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, Paul. No, I I think I think I've never considered alphas or betas or I, I it, this is a new thing for me, and I have to sort of think about it because of, in a way, I've I've had people that couldn't stand me because yeah. I was too. I was too much to like them, and and after I turned sixty, mm. I, I and this is about work. I just walked to them and I said, "Listen, I know you can't stand me because I'm a threat to you. Let's make a deal here." <laughs> mm. I just still go straight to the point. This is also a power game, isn't it? It's a, it's a, you may automatically dislike somebody because he sort of puts you off balance, but in a way, you understand what's going on. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's, it, yeah, I hate to say it, but it's a power struggle. People may yeah. hate you because you are as clever as them and you're a threat. So you might take yeah. the limelight from them. Yeah. So I said, oh, let's face it, you know, let's make a contract. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> to oh, make this work, let, let's have this a love hate relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's make it work and show some respect at the same time. After all, we're stay, at stay, at, stay, stay out of each other's lane. That's mm -hmm. it. It could be, it could be both two alphas too. That could be it too. Could be it. Sometimes yeah. alpha doesn't want to, they don't want to lose a lot of energy to get into something with you or a battle with you. So you just mm -hmm. stay in your own lane, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and the next question is, okay, uh, we talk about earlier in the day and you don't accept your, when you, some person is ignoring you, it means the person likes you. Okay, what about mm. when you are in the relationship? Uh, does the same formula apply or uh, yes. the grounds are changed? No, the same rules apply. Huh. But if you're in the relationship, if you're in the relationship and you got to that point, so you might be changing and the other person isn't changing. Mm -hmm. So now you have to figure out, how, are they going to change with me or am I going to move on? You know, and you're, that's what you, you're doing, you know, as I said, I, I guess it was last time that you take, I believe it was, I said it here, that you take, mm -hmm. you're not running from something, you're stepping towards something. Mm -hmm. So you're setting the expectations of what you want to see around you. So when you notice these, now you're noticing, you, didn't, you probably didn't notice them before. Because you're growing, so now you notice these patterns, and you you want to you want to stop them because they're not healthy for you. So you're doing it, you know. You're noticing, like the same thing when I said about being aware of your thoughts. 
be aware of your relationships. Be aware of the patterns in your relationships and then say, hey, wow. Like you could just start off the same thing. You start off by noticing. You notice this pattern, that pattern. Oh, this normally happens. I don't even notice this happens. And you start noticing it. Then you start challenging it. And then you start replacing it with things that you want to see around you, you know? And it means yourself, too. You're changing what's outside of you, but you're also changing what's inside of you. It's, it's happening together. You know, or you might be working on one more internally, and then the next, you know, then for a time you're focusing your energy on what you're, what's around you. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's not easy. Yeah. Things that are happening outside also things that are happening yes. inside of you and mm -hmm. when you when you when you have found the cycle this manipulative cycle and pattern you have finally realized that after all these years now is it, it is time to break the cycle of manipulation you just have to yes. get the energy you have to just get together all the energy in you and just say it i don't want that i don't want this this one sided thing Have you ever apologized to me? It is always the it is always me who goes to you to apologize, who comes to you and apologize. You have never apologized to me. You have to break the cycle, Paul. But mm -hmm. I don't know what I well, I think it's a <laughs> gradual thing because, mm -hmm. like Melissa said, we are growing, and you take it step by step. It doesn't happen overnight. It never did. I mean, it never did with me, and. When I'm talking about like my sister, I mean, I mean, it took about what well, I would say about eight years, eight to nine years for this gradual, I would, I would say distancing, but, and I decided because I, I needed to keep my sanity and I didn't like uh, the way um, this communication, I mean, it was futile for me. I mean, it was constant criticism about this and that and uh, she had i mean her her husband is a member of parliament and he is he's he's very debated about what he says about you know his and i never ever talk about her husband to her i never criticize anything that he has said and made every every feminist go haywire in in the papers in iceland and i never mentioned i never mentioned him with her because it, it was not my place. He was my brother-in-law. There was a, a certain honor and I honored her and her marriage and her relationship. But when it came to my relationships or my, yeah. that was, it wasn't as worthwhile. And I know to, and it annoyed me, but I couldn't really say anything. Because of, I, I, I wasn't going to stay there anyway. I tried to ignore it as, as much as I did, uh, as I could. And then then up, up two or three years ago, I just finally let go totally. And 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 she phoned me up and said, I know you don't, you, you're not excited to talk to me, but I feel we have to talk about this certain subject. And I said, I was always polite. I said, yes, yes, you know. I never discussed, you know, anything just, what we needed to talk about but nothing else finally it, you have break the cycle broke the cycle i i did break the cycle and and it may have been painful four mm -hmm. or five years ago <laughs> but not now no i agree you you have It's found the now. Peace. you have found the peace in yourself it doesn't you have matter. made the It's, it's, yeah, it was always it's about me angering her, you know. So that's why you know the worst when you hang up with a family member and you feel worse. You know when you talk to them, there's always a feeling of like um, dissatisfaction or not measured, like or just gloom and doom or just this constant loop. And to yeah. be free of those things is just amazing. Mm. You know, so it's not. I don't even. It's not even about judging them. It's just you know, and and these. I don't even. I'm past judgment. I'm just like I feel so much better. I feel yeah. so much better. Like the same thing when it comes to putting healthy food in my body, healthy mind, healthy rela relationships. I feel so much better, you know? Yeah. And if, if you can fix them, God bless. You know, great, great. Mm. But sometimes you can't. Um, yeah. but, uh, I was going to say something about that. I forgot. Now I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, when you finally made your peace, then I think the only way you can make your peace is when you know the 
cause and root of a problem. When you you know that it, it, as long as it, you don't know the problem, you don't know the root cause of the problem, then you won't yes. you won't be able to make a peace with yourself. And uh, Malika, you can make you're, small you're, changes. You can make small changes if you don't deal with the root. You'll make some. You'll put some band aids on it. It could help temporarily, but if you don't um, work at the root of the problem. Mm-hmm. It, it, you're not going to make significant changes in your life. You'll, you'll have, you know, you'll be it's on the same tra- trajectory. You'll be on the same trajectory. Maybe, you oh, know, you'll no, present no, no. a couple band-aids, you know, but you're not going to have real change or, or meaning that way if you don't make the real changes. Yes, you will be on the same trajectory over and over again. And things will keep Yeah, the cycle. You. We- yeah, the cycle. That you, you're going to keep on messing up, messing up things. And Paul, your final thoughts on how to deal with uh, being ignored with someone by someone that you love in a relationship. Your final thoughts. Well, you, uh, it, it's always back to work about yourself. It's about loving yourself mm-hmm. and taking it from there. You always have to go to your own yard, to your own space and work from there. Because, I mean, you're going to have to work with yourself, the inner work anyway, whether right. the relationship is going to survive this or not. So it, it's, and I'm very fixated about on um, what will you bring into the relationship? Let's say it's in dire straits. And how, what are you going to bring into it? Let's say that both parties are going to try to fix it. You have to do the inner work first, but it's hopeless to go back with nothing new in your basket. You have to put something into it that came from yourself. And you have to be true to yourself first before you can be true to your partner. Yeah. And yeah. Melissa is right. You have to know where you stand. You have to know where you stand anyway. Yeah. And you Melissa, decide where you stand. Melissa, mm. your final thoughts. Well, you decide where you stand. It's all about, I think we keep thinking that it's um, something outside of us and it's not. Um, Mm. We decide what our lives are going to be like. We decide that. So we decide that by every choice we make. And, um, you know, a question is someone, you know, back to why someone would be ignoring you. Well, the fact is they're ignoring you. That's their behavior. Okay. So you don't need to hear a thousand words as to why they're ignoring, they're ignoring you. This is how they behave when they get stressed or things go wrong in their life. They ignore you. So it tells you many things. So listen to that, you know, listen to it. Yes, indeed. You have to break the cycle. It is always you. It is always your choice. You have to make the choice. And Wait, more thing to, it doesn't, and also it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Maybe that's what needs to be done. Maybe there's a reason why they're ignoring you because they have mixed signals or they don't feel like you might be a good fit for them. Or maybe, you know, they're having misgivings on that. So that's, mm. that's okay. You're not meant yeah. for everybody. You know, yeah. you're not meant for everybody. It's okay. Yeah. Not, we're not, it's not the scarcity causes, out there. The causes and reason, but there could be many causes and there could be many reasons, but it all comes down to you, your choices. And you have to work on yourself. You have to break the cycle and you have to realize you have to see those patterns. You have to be very cautious about these things. You have to recognize your own worth, you have to recognize that you have to appreciate yourself. And when you do that, I think you would be able to see those patterns. And, and it takes a lot of time. It, it takes a lot of energy to do that, to accept your feelings and to confront your feelings and share it with others. It, it also requires a lot of energy. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Paul, so much. Mm-hmm. And it was a very, uh, a very deep, uh, a very in-depth topic. It, it is a topic that, that is not easy to discuss, uh, but we have discussed it and we discuss it from different angles. And thank you, Burakat. Uh, you have been, Burakat has been, uh, I don't know, a full name. And we know it's Elaine. <laughs> Elaine. 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 Yeah. 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 Elaine. That's Elaine. Uh, uh-huh. Elaine. Uh, she has been with us the whole time. Thank you. Love Jessica. her. Thank you. Uh, 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 Amanda and other people for your comments and thank you have a good day good afternoon or good we'll evening, see you next Saturday
Yeah, see you next time. Okay. Love.